Good morning, folks. About two hours ago, I made the two conference videos used in my presentation about earthquake forecasting public. Wanted you to have them, and plus, they are relevant for today's news. Let's get started over at spaceweathernews.com. And in 193 angstroms, it will appear to be a calm 24 hours. And that is indeed the case on the Earth-facing longitudes. However, you may notice coronal expansions and snaps around the limb. And those occurred as the sun-diving comet of the Kreutz family came in at the January position of our orbit, ionized, excited, and spread into the coronal magnetic fields of the south. We're going to see some of the plasma filaments destabilizing, lifting, and releasing. Even small pops on the sun moves Earth worth of material. We'll back out and take another look to see the plasma lifting and exiting at multiple locations. You know, the Discover satellite continues to have problems. Another preposterous reading that didn't get picked up anywhere else and which did not hit Earth's magnetic field or affect the particle flows around our planet. That's not possible if it was real, and we've got to recognize that Discover may not be up there very long when cosmic rays peak at the turn of the decade. While the primary coronal holes are sparse everywhere but the polar region, we are indeed seeing a large breadth of darkness that entered the Earth-facing position yesterday and is crossing through. Moving to seismicity, where a 6.8 struck the crust south of the Philippines, luckily it appears to have been less damaging than it could have been. Our forecasting model actually missed this one. Remember, based on historical statistics, we should be able to get about 70 to 80 percent of big quakes using less than 20 percent of the world's active faults. We're at 75 percent success right now, and way below that cutoff average. Details at QuakeWatch.net. We also had Sakurajima go off early yesterday. Not its most visually spectacular eruption, but does mean we'll need to get focused back on the northwestern Pacific. So the water and electric current and olivine, etc. Turns out that the mechanisms used in blot echo theory are actually getting a boost from water trapped in the cold slab pushing downward. That's the implication of this experiment. These thin lines of water are able to store and discharge an incredible amount of energy. This principle may actually explain how the global electric circuit could be active at depths. Website members of suspiciousobservers.org, you got a new deeper look on the eco-terrorism shooting. And of course, it is Saturday, so the Fly on the Wall podcast is coming up in just a few hours. You're going to see major weather concerns in the U.S., Europe, and one leaving New Zealand. We've also got a null school run and shots of our star to close. It's 5.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.